hello there boys and girls. Welcome back for a little bit more flip class. You should be excited because this is the last flip lecture of this short little unit on metabolism. Today we're going to talk about photosynthesis, which as you can see here is pretty much the exact opposite of cellular respiration. It takes energy and it packages it using uh, different materials into food, releases oxygen, lets uh, you know, cellular respiration take place, and then also plays a big part in the cycle. Pay attention here today, boys and girls, to what happens with oxygen and CO2. Those are the two main players, and watch how photosynthesis and cellular respiration form a closed loop, both supporting the other. Without these two processes, life as we know it would not be possible. So let's get into it. You can see up here at the top we have glucose and oxygen yields carbon dioxide and a little bit of water. This at the top here is cellular respiration. Also worth noting when all is said and done between glycolysis, the Krebs cycle, and the electron transport chain, you end up charging 36 ATP. That's capturing that energy, using it in energy cash readily available. Look down at the bottom and you will see if you take the products of cellular respiration, those become the reactants for photosynthesis. Carbon dioxide and water, which is what you end up with, add in the energy that will yield glucose, water, and some oxygen. The only thing that's different is the adding of the water. Uh, water is on both sides for this one, just a little bit less water, just to blow off some steam for the plants. But you can see that almost essentially the products from one side are the reactants of the other, and the reactants from one side become the products of the other. They're exact opposites. So let's talk about plants and energy. Plants use photosynthesis in a little bit different way from uh, photosynthetic bacteria because they're a little bit more complex and they've got additional organelles. Plants perform photosynthesis to synthesize food. It's very important because you're taught very young, plants make their own energy, which is true, but so does every other organism ever. We all make our own energy. What's cool about plants is they make their own food. They synthesize their own food. All right, that food would be a glucose. So the question is where do they get their energy? They get their energy from cellular respiration just like we do. They use glucose to make ATP uh, just like we do. So it seems kind of silly, why not just take that energy from the sunlight and use it directly, but instead uh, they've developed a way to harness the energy to make the food and then they send the food to the mitochondria just like all other eukaryotic cells, which is further evidence that the mitochondria came first and the chloroplast was added in later. So again, here's a picture of the plant cell. We're going to focus mostly here on the chloroplast. You guys were uh, seeing before that they had all these weird like disc things inside of them. Well, we're going to get into what those disc things really are today. Here is a chloroplast zoomed in a lot more close And you see they've got the double membrane, outer and inner membrane, the double-double just like mitochondria. But instead of the inner membrane being so important this time, instead we have other stuff on the inside. Now they still have this cytoplasmy type stuff, this in the chloroplast we call it the stroma. That's essentially the cytoplasm of the chloroplast. And then you can see we have these thylakoids. Here they are, thylakoids. The thylakoids are essentially the photovoltaic cells. The, what their solar panels, guys, they're solar panels. And when you have a stack of thylakoids, we call that a granum. Many grana make up the chloroplast. And inside all the thylakoids you can see that there's this open space inside there that is called the lumen. Lumen is a word that's just used for any open space. Almost all your blood vessels have a lumen. It's a very common uh, physiological term. So in plant physiology, when we talk about lumen, for this unit anyway, we're going to be talking about the inner space inside the thylakoids. Now this is a two-step process. Think about your favorite two-step stance. Photosynthesis, two phases. You have the light reactions. This is where we actually use electron transport chains to capture energy from the sun. And instead of producing ATP, now well, it makes a little bit, but for the most part, we're really interested in NADPH. 
slightly different electron carrier because it's got phosphorus in it. That's really the main difference. And it's still it's going to be NADP plus, and then we're going to use it to capture and throw some H's on it. Uh, essentially, water gets split, and that is what generates the oxygen gas. So in the light reactions is when the oxygen byproduct is made and released into the atmosphere. After that, you have the dark reactions. The dark reactions are independent of the light and they can happen anytime. Some plants actually split these up and do light reactions during the day and dark reactions at night. The dark reactions though don't need to be at night, they just don't need any light. It consists of the Calvin cycle, which uses the ATP and NADPH made in the electron transport chains to generate glucose. That would be the sweet, delicious sugar. And other carbon-based products can be utilized here too, but we're just mainly going to focus on the Calvin cycle and the functions of a glucose. If you feel like Googling up some Google in the Moodle, uh, go crazy on all the things that plants could possibly make as a result of photosynthesis. Here we take those hydrogen that was broken off the oxygen and the light reactions. We add them to CO2. Literally, we are fixing uh, the carbons together, and then uh, they take some of the oxygen and get the water uh, byproduct as well. Here's a picture that shows that happening. Here's the light reactions. You can see uh, there's the light come on in, just bleep, activating the thylakoids. This is where the light reactions take place. That charges up NADPH, gives you a little bit of ATP. That goes into the Calvin cycle, similar to the Krebs cycle, because it's a cycle where uh, different things happen to the carbon. It goes through different carbon-based molecules until it is finally turned into uh, some kind of sugary substance like glucose, or in this case, they're showing you sucrose, which is just a different kind of sugar. For the most part, we're making carbohydrates this way. We're fixing the carbon. I can't explain to you enough that when you have a big old tree that big old tree is big old tree made out of carbon that came out of the atmosphere using this process. It's the coolest thing ever. Uh, so remember, the light reactions, they happen in the thylakoids. The dark reactions happen in the stroma. So even, uh, even compared to cellular respiration, we're going backwards. In the mitochondria, we start in the matrix, then we go to the electron transport chain. Here, we start out with the electron transport chain, and then we go to the stroma for the cycling. Here is a little bit of animation. This link right here is not a YouTube video, so it won't let me do an annotation, but the link is in the description, which is down in there. If you've never looked at the description, you should. There's lots of links in there, including this PowerPoint file and any like homework or labs that I'd have you be doing with this the next day in class. So here is leaf. You can see leaf. If we zoom in farther, this is what leaf looks like. You can see there's multiple cells that make up leaf. There they are, cell, 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 cell. And we are going to just look at one echloroplast. You see, we zoom in to one cell. There is one cell, looks like normal cell, but here we go, chloroplast. We can peel off the outer layer, and peel off the inner layer, and you can see here is your chloroplast structure again. Uh, this is a great study tactic, instead of drawing it over and over again, you can use this uh, to sort of play around with it. There's even some websites that let you build your own chloroplast. If you find them, uh, put them in the additional resources on the noodle. But again, we're concerned primarily with the thylakoids. So we're going to zoom way in on the thylakoids. Here we are zooming in and you can see... Here we're looking at a close-up of the thylakoid inner membrane, showing five specific points of interest on the electron transport chain. Click on any one of them for more information. Do you see how it's got that same phospholipid bilayer? And this looks very similar to the inner mitochondrial membrane. You can see right here that literally we have for us an electron transport chain. Just this one is going to be uh, using light for the initial energy source. So here it is. Bam, there comes the energy. Electrons go floopity floopity floo. And what that does is it uses ATP synthase. And up here we're making more NADPH. Same ATP synthase type of thing as from cellular respirations electron transport chain and these are both doing active transport and you can see on the bottom we're creating the hydrogen gradient we're doing active transport to pump those things up gives us again we're after NADPH and some ATP
after the light reactions that we just watched, and if you want to watch it again, that link is still in the description, we go to the dark reactions. Again, they don't have to be in the dark, but they don't need the light, so we call them the dark reactions. Here's the light reactions, charging up some ATP, and a pretty good amount, and charging up a lot of NADPH. We send all of those things to be used in the Calvin cycle. When they go into the Calvin cycle, you can see that they get turned back into their uncharged versions, ADP and NADP+, to be further recharged by the light reactions. The Calvin cycle goes in a cycle, uh, changing carbon into different intermediaries, but essentially you take 6 CO2 and you're going to get one glucose for each of those 6 CO2. one glucose for 6 CO2. And again, this is called carbon fixing because we're taking the carbon, we're fixing it uh, here, and it releases water as a waste product. So the two waste products coming out of photosynthesis, oxygen, which we need, and a little bit of water vapor that goes out into the atmosphere. Plus, you know, the glucose is the main thing we're going after. So here is in words, basically all the stuff that I just said. We have the ATP is accumulated and NADPH is ready and charged. We use those to fix carbon. This is the appropriate terminology, just like nitrogen fixing here. We're fixing carbon onto our good friend the glycas. It takes a ton of energy, but remember that energy was provided by the light reactions, by that electron transport chain. It does not require light, but Without the light reactions, the dark reactions could not happen. So you need light at some point for the plant to be able to do photosynthesis, which makes sense because it's called photosynthesis. Here's another picture. If you want, you can pause the video and enjoy all its majesty. Uh, basically, what you need to know is that it takes 6 CO2, gives you one glucose, and uses a pretty good amount of ATP and NADPH. After that, we text the products whatever we don't store in the vacuole for long-term use, goes into the mitochondria for cellular respiration. And the cycle continues. Thanks for watching, everybody. Don't forget to moodle in the moodle with the moodle. Have a great day.